This woman is married to a man with a disability. One day, she loses her temper and, even though he is unable to move, throws him in the pool. Cruel, the woman laughs, while the man suffocates under the water. Some time ago, this husband greets his wife. She was tending the garden of their beautiful beach house, and the attentive husband notices that his wife is sweaty and offers her a glass of water. He reveals that he goes to the supermarket to buy meat and drinks so the two can enjoy the weekend at the pool, and the wife is anxious to enjoy the sunny day with her husband. A serious accident happened shortly after the man left the house, however. Desperate in the hospital, the wife asks the doctor if her husband was okay, but the doctor reveals that she has no good news. She reveals that that man, until recently healthy, could become quadriplegic. The wife despairs, not believing what is happening, and then she asks if there is no chance of recovery, the doctor says that there is no surgery for his situation, and that only physiotherapy can help him, but only over the years. The woman seems hopeless, but the doctor tries to calm her down, saying that with physiotherapy her husband will be able to walk again. The wife tries to be positive and seems to believe in this possibility, so she calms down, thanks the doctor and leaves the hospital. Weeks later, now with her husband at home, the woman complains about the condition he is in, saying that he ended her life. The man, however, cannot even defend himself, as he has lost the ability to speak. She asks if he is thirsty. But she starts to fill a cup with coffee, and, without any care, makes her husband swallow the coffee, and then immediately throws the hot drink in his face, proving to be very cruel. The next day, while the wife has an orange, the husband seems to whisper that he is hungry. But the cruel wife, instead of feeding her husband, mocks his situation and rubs the orange in the man's face, even knowing the acidity present in the fruit. In an aggressive tone of voice, she calls her husband useless and helpless, insinuating that he got that way through his own fault. He whispers for help, but she replies that he ended her life. The husband, aware of the humiliation he is being subjected to, tries to say that he would like to get up from his chair, but the cruel wife starts to laugh at the poor man's situation. In addition to not feeding him food, she does not feed her husband's hopes, stating that he will be a quadriplegic forever. And cynical and ironic, she asks what else her husband would like to do. And he once again whispers for help, looking distressed at being in these conditions. But the woman acts maliciously and once again rubs the orange in her husband's face, and then begins to laugh, showing signs of sadism. The next day she follows one of the doctor's recommendations, which is always to make him sunbathe a little, but even that she does without goodwill and yells at her invalid husband. Always aggressively, she starts to apply some sunscreen on her husband's face. The man starts to scream, and she once again laughs at the humiliation suffered by that man. But when she was preparing some more evil against him, someone knocked on the gate of the house, and she immediately changed her tone. She then stops beating her husband and goes to the gate of the house to find out who it is. When she opens it, a young man greets her, who reveals that he is there to take care of her handicapped husband. Very smiling and friendly, she asks who he is and the man reveals that he is a friend of the man and that he decided to visit him after learning about the accident. The woman looks like a different person, now with a sweet and calm voice, and says she will take her husband's friend to where the man is. On the way to the pool, the woman starts flirting with her husband's friend and says she's never seen him. He reveals that they worked together a few years ago, and the woman wastes no time, and says she found him very charming and handsome. The boy is a little embarrassed. The woman, then, much nicer than she really is, makes him feel free to get close to his old friend, named Luther. He comes to the man's side and greets him. Even whispering, the woman's husband manages to respond and regrets being in this situation and asks his friend for help. Afraid that the husband will reveal what is actually happening, the wife interrupts him and says that after the accident he started to delirious and talk nonsense. He believes in his friend's cruel wife and says goodbye to Luther, who begs his friend to stay and help him. But before leaving, the woman grabs her husband's friend by the arm and asks him to stay a little longer. He says he would like to but the friend needs to rest. Without any shame, she says that, unlike her husband, she is very healthy. The friend is confused but seems to like what she is proposing. The woman starts to flirt even more, now touching her husband's friend's body, 
and starts praising his appearance. And without worrying about her handicapped husband, she invites him to spend the afternoon at the pool with her. The man replies that he likes the idea, but asks if his friend was in agreement with it. She then says that they can fix it and the man also shows no shame and starts kissing the woman. The man sees everything, but is unable to do anything to stop those two, so he starts screaming to show all his dissatisfaction and anger. The wife is angry with her husband and, even though he is unable to get around, throws him in the pool. Cruel, the woman laughs, while the man suffocates under the water. The friend is shocked by the woman's cruelty and asks how she is able to act like that. He jumps into the pool to try to stop something worse from happening. On another day, the woman is on the couch kissing the man, while the husband is next to her, watching everything. He whispers asking the two to stop it, but they laugh at the man and she, never tired of being cruel, calls her husband useless. He whispers once more and calls them traitors. But the two don't care anymore and the wife says she'll go to the bathroom and be right back. When she leaves, the man's supposed friend says he is there to help, after all, he is no longer able to satisfy his own woman. Without any need, she throws the garbage on the man's head and tells him to stop spoiling her fun time. Then the two go back to kissing passionately as if her husband wasn't right next to them. Suddenly, the woman's cell phone rings and she promptly answers the call. On the other side is a woman named Aline. Alan's parents are interested in buying the house of the cruel woman named Sheila. Aline asks what time she could come to the house to get to know the property better. And Sheila says she can meet them that very day. The two agree to meet a few hours later and Sheila, appearing to be very happy with the opportunity, hangs up. After ending the phone conversation, her husband's friend asks if she is sure about selling the house. She confirms and says that they will be rich and can finally live together happily. Later, the woman goes to a square near the house. She is complaining that her husband is a lot of work and that he gives her a lot of expenses. Crueler than ever, she says she will teach him how to sell chocolate on the street. So she takes the chocolate and hints how that invalid man will have to sell. And the poor man starts repeating the word chocolate, scared of what his wife might do. Before leaving him alone in the square, the woman yells at him and demands that he sell everything, because according to her this is the least that can be done after she spends thousands of dollars on him. A week later, she returns to that square and says that now the man will sell the chocolates to support himself. She reveals that she doesn't want the man anymore and that she is tired of living with him. He tries to ask her not to leave him, but she leaves without even looking back. Minutes later, a young woman appears in the square selling award-winning pamphlets. She approaches the man and asks if he is all right. He then uses all the strength he has to ask for help. She doesn't seem to understand the situation and says she doesn't have the money to buy chocolates, despite being hungry. Even in a humiliating situation, he is kind to that young woman and offers her one of the chocolates. She thanks him and sits next to the man to keep him company. The young woman says she is hungry and regrets not having sold any of the tickets. She then comes up with the idea of giving the man one of the winning tickets as a form of payment and she jokes that if he wins, she would like to receive half. The man laughs, something he probably hasn't done in months. She is also kind and asks what happened to him. With speech difficulties, he says that he was run over and that he was mistreated and abandoned by the wife he loved for many years. The girl is shocked and says she's sorry for him. Days have passed and now the man and the girl sell the winning tickets together. She remembers that the result of the award comes out that day and asks him to deliver the ticket she gave him in the square. When she opens the note she had given to Luther, the young woman begins to check the award numbers. She starts to notice that the man's ticket numbers match the lottery and doesn't seem to believe it. But she finds out that it's true, his ticket won and the two celebrate a lot, after all, the prize is one million dollars. Weeks later, Luther's cruel ex-wife is in a job interview. The secretary asks which position she would be applying for, and, with a little shame, she says she accepts a job consistent with her level. 
The secretary doesn't quite understand what she means and asks to look at the resume of that arrogant and cruel woman. The secretary then analyzes the resume and realizes that that woman had never worked anywhere. And she then recalls that until recently she had a luxurious life and says that now she needs to work. The secretary says that for her resume, the only vacancies available would be for receptionist and cleaning lady. Even though she has nothing else, she insists on being arrogant and, with disgust, states that she will accept the receptionist position. The secretary notices the arrogance and says that receptionist is a decent job and that she should be proud. And then she says that as it is a vacancy that was in need of someone, the woman is hired and it is set for her to start working the next day. At the company's door, the secretary welcomes the new employee and says that it will be a pleasure to have her as a co-worker. When suddenly a luxury car arrives at the company and the secretary claims to be the boss. But the woman had no idea that Luther was in that car, now 100% recovered and a successful businessman. As he is about to enter the company he owns, Luther spots his ex-wife Sheila. She greets him happily, but he asks what she is doing at his company. Sheila says she is happy and surprised by her ex-husband and asks how he managed to walk again. And then he says that it was through physical therapy, but that it wouldn't be possible without a specific person. And then that young woman who helped him appears and Sheila asks who she is. Before Luther answers, the young woman interrupts him and reveals her name is Julia and tells that she is Luther's new wife. And she asks if Sheila is the ex-wife that Luther has talked so much about. And she reveals that she knows that Sheila abandoned Luther when he needed it most and the man replies that life is full of surprises. Luther's current wife recalls the wedding vows, saying that a wife must stand by her husband in health and in sickness, and that Sheila abandoned her husband when he was ill, and wants to get back together now that he is well. Julia looks at that hypocritical woman and suggests that she look to the two of them as role models. Embarrassed, Sheila turns her back to leave, but Luther asks her to wait and asks if she did a job interview at his company. She reveals that the next day she will start working as a receptionist. The ex-husband proves not to be a vindictive person and says that she will be welcome as a new employee of the company. And the young woman agrees, saying that in life everyone deserves a second chance to redeem themselves. Then they say, goodbye and Sheila leaves, thinking her life could be very different.